making our cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls are so delicious and the smell when they're baking is just incredible. Um, so the dough in this recipe is a bread dough, but it's a different type of bread dough than we made uh, the Spanish bread with. Um, so this is a, an enriched dough. Um, and by that, I mean that we added, we add milk, eggs, and butter to this dough. It's a sweet dough. It's an enriched dough. So it's, it gives it, it's just gives it a lot more um, elasticity and it's very uh, soft dough. Um, unlike the Spanish bread where we just used flour, um, salt, yeast, and water. So this just adds a little bit, um, oh, a little bit of flavor actually to the bread. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna activate our yeast. So I have got one and one third cup of warmed, not hot, but warmed milk. We're gonna add that to our bowl. I have got one quarter cup of sugar. So we'll add that to our bowl. I've got one package of instant yeast. Um, one package is equal to two and one quarter teaspoons. So I'm gonna sprinkle that in there. I have got two room temperature eggs. Um, when Sometimes it doesn't matter so much if your eggs are room temperature or not, but I find that when I'm baking, um, oh goodness, <laughs> you don't want to add, uh, that egg is cracked right in half. Um, you don't want to add too much, and this is why you should actually crack your eggs into a bowl for lesson learned. All right, <laughs> so now we're going to add our live television. Well, not quite live. Um, we're going to add our melted butter. that all in there. All right. So we're just going to use a wooden spoon. I don't know that it matters that you use a wooden spoon, but I like a wooden spoon for this. And we're just going to mix all this together. Make sure our eggs are broken up a little bit. There we go. Mix that together. And what we're going to do, so it'll take a, a few minutes for the yeast to start to activate. Um, so what we're going to do is just leave this sitting on the counter for about five minutes. We've given our yeast some time to activate. Doesn't look much different than it did before, but you can see a little bit if you look at it pretty closely. That to the uh, yeast looks a little bit bigger than it did when it went in. All right, so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to add, we've got four and a half cups of flour total. We're gonna add two cups to begin with. Um, you don't wanna to add too much flour in this into this dough uh, because it will get really tough and we want this to be a nice soft dough. So we wanna start with two cups of flour and then add half a cup at a time until we get the bread, the dough to pull away from the sides of the bowl and come together. So that's what we're looking for. But we're just gonna add our two cups first along with a half teaspoon of salt. You don't want to add the salt and the yeast um, together at the same time because salt actually kills yeast. Um, so that's why we're adding it now because it's already been activated. So we got that started. So we're just gonna stir this together until that comes together. If you have a big mixer, like a stand mixer, um, please feel free to use that. That's normally what I use, but I just wanted to um, show you that you can you can actually make bread without one. It is entirely possible. All right, so that has come together pretty well. But you can see this is not a dough yet. This is very runny. So we're going to go back to our flour and we're going to add about a half a cup, more or less. Uh, we're gonna add that in, stir some more, get that all mixed in. You can see it's kind of coming together now, becoming more dough-like 
and less batter like, I guess. This is gonna take a little bit of strength, especially the more flour you add, but you can do it. Build those muscles. Build the muscles by baking. All right, that's all added in, so we're gonna add another half a cup of flour. Stir that in. Definitely see a difference now. Starting to come away a little bit from the sides, but it's still very sticky, much too sticky to actually work with. It would just be a big blob. All right, another half a cup. And basically the reason why you may not always need four and a half cups of flour is uh, because of the of the weather. Um, weather plays a big part in baking bread um, because the flour and the yeast are both affected by temperature and by humidity. Um, so if the if it's really humid, you may need more flour. If it's a really dry day, um, you may need less flour. It just really depends on what your conditions are. And sometimes you just need the exact right amount. Some recipes are a little bit more forgiving. Um, if you add a little extra, too much flour, you can always just add a little bit of water. This one is a little less forgiving in that you really want to try and get it the right consistency the first time. We're going to add another half a cup. It's not quite coming together the way I want it yet. So this is getting to be harder harder <laughs> building those muscles all right and change arms all right see it's coming together much better now it's still a little sticky we're going to try and get as much of that flour into the dough as we can just using our spoons at some point i'm probably going to change over to my hands just because it's a little easier it is still a little too sticky on the inside. So I think we're going to need to add a little bit more flour. Let's see what we've got here. It's getting pretty close. Though. All right, we're going to add another half a cup. Let's see where we are. That might be all we need today. I think this is where I'm going to change over to using my hand to get this mixed in. Oops. Okay, so we're just going to try and get as much of that flour in as we can without too much going in. You want it to be soft. All right, I think that's about all it's going to take. So. What I'm going to do now is, get this out of my way a second. All right, we're just going to put a little bit of flour on our, on our worktop, on my countertop. And we're gonna take our dough, put that right on the counter. There's a little bit stuck to the bottom here. Try and get that out of there. All right, so what we're gonna do is knead the dough. We're gonna knead this for about three to five minutes, which seems like a long time. But what we're doing when we knead the bread or knead the dough, we may have to add some more flour as we go because it's a little sticky. Yet. You don't want it to stick to you, um, but you don't also want it to, have to be too um, stiff of a dough either. So it's kind of a fine balance with this one. Um, so anyway, what we're doing when we knead the dough is we are building the gluten in the flour of the dough. <laughs> this is really sticky stuff. Um, and, oh yeah, I do have flour in there. Uh, so we're, we're building up the gluten, which is going to help our bread, the texture of our bread. So 
a little hard to tell sometimes when it's in that bowl if it's gonna be completely ready or if we're gonna need a little bit more flour. So you can kind of tell that more when you're kneading it. And basically when you knead it, you're gonna push it away from you, turn it, pull it or um, pull the top part down, push it away from you, turn it, and you're just gonna do that. <laughs> I really need my bench scraper. Um, just gonna keep doing that until it is not sticky anymore. We're looking for a dough that's just really soft. I, I, I wish you could feel this because it's just, it's so soft. It's soft like a pillow. Um, the other the other dough recipe that I, I make in this video, the Spanish, uh, Spanish bread, the dough is a lot more stiff. So it's, I, you, you know, the only way to, to really know is to just feel it. And uh, the way to do that is to keep practicing and making bread over and over again until you are really comfortable with the way you, things should feel. Um, a sweet bread like this uh, cinnamon dough or cinnamon roll recipe is just going to be a nice soft dough. As you can see now, it's come together. It's not really sticky anymore. I'm going to pat it into a nice ball. I have got a, a bowl that I have put a little bit of oil into the bottom. We're just going to kind of wipe that around to make sure it's coated so nothing sticks to the bowl. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put our bread dough into the bowl. And what I'm going to do is flip it and flip it again so that it's oiled all over. And the next step is going to be to cover this. I've got these nice little bowl covers that are plastic that I like to use. So we're going to cover that with our plastic. If you don't have one of those, you can put plastic wrap over the top, wax paper, whatever you've got, parchment. Um, and you can, or you can also put a, like a clean kitchen towel over it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to proof this. So basically it needs to sit in a warm uh, place in your house for about an hour. So the dough will double in size. It'll be twice the size it is right now. Um, a good place to put your bread dough is, you know, if you have an, a warm spot in your kitchen, um, you can just put it in there. If you have a warmer spot in your house that isn't in your kitchen, you can certainly put it there. I would avoid putting it near um, any air vents uh, because you don't want it to be disturbed by the air moving. It needs to be a still place that's a little bit warm. If, if your uh, space isn't as warm, as um, the bread or the dough needs it to be, it will still rise. It will just take a little bit longer. So an hour is kind of an approximate number depending on what your temperature is. Um, it's, if it's, you know, kind of a room temperature, it might take a little bit longer. If it's a little bit warmer than that, it might take a little shorter period of time. Um, you don't want to riot, you don't want it to raise really fast either because that can um, collapse the bread and make it not rise. So. Um, I am going to put mine in in my oven because I happen to have a setting on my oven for proofing. So I'm going to do that, and we're going to come back and watch and look at it in about an hour. Action! Wow, our dough has proofed. You can see it is twice the size it was when we put it um, into the bowl to proof. So what we're going to do is gently remove this from our bowl. I'm actually going to sprinkle a little flour on the counter first before we roll this out. So we're going to put our dough out onto our counter. It does have a little flour on that, so that's good. Um, we're going to want to flour the top a little bit. This dough is so incredibly lovely and soft just the way it's supposed to be. Um, I'm gonna just get this started a little bit with my hands. And then what we're going to do <laughs> is roll out our dough 
so that it. <laughs> I'm messy when I cook. So that it's 18 inches long by about 12 inches wide. So we're almost there already, actually. We're just gonna roll that out. We wanna make it as close to a rectangle as possible. Just a little bit that way. That looks pretty good, actually, I think. Usually it takes me longer than that. I'm pretty impressed. All right, we wanna make sure that we're not gonna stick here. Looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna just get this a little bit more rectangular up at the top and at the bottom. Shape it with your fingers a little bit if you have to. All right, so this is the part where we add the filling. And for the filling, I have a quarter cup of soft butter. Hopefully it's pretty soft. Um, and I have uh, a combination of brown sugar and cinnamon. So I have one cup of brown sugar and two teaspoons of cinnamon, ground cinnamon that I mixed together in this bowl. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to spread the butter. Uh-oh, <laughs> it's not as soft as I wanted it to be. The dough is really soft. So there we have it. All right, so we're gonna spread our butter as evenly as possible over all of our dough. This is gonna add so much flavor and it's gonna help our um, cinnamon and sugar kind of become more sauce-like almost really. So this is the fun part, the yummy part, the part that makes it oh so yummy. That spread on there it takes a little, little effort. I may have wanted to soften this butter just a little bit longer, but that's okay. It'll work. Okay, we are got one little corner left. I think I've got a little bit too much butter. I may have overestimated a quarter cup butter. All right. And when you're baking, um, you need to be a little bit more. Um, exact with your measurements like your flour um, and salt and things like that because baking is more of a science than cooking is cooking you can kind of get away with a little bit extra salt or a little less salt or um, you know if you put in a few more carrots than it calls for you you're probably gonna be able to get away with that most of the time but in baking you really can't because it's a science these things are kind of known quantities that you need for different things. So uh, just make sure to be aware of that when you're measuring out your ingredients um, to make sure that you get the, the proper quantities. And technically, the best way to measure ingredients when you're baking is to weigh them. Um, for some reason in the United States, we tend to not weigh our baking ingredients. We use cups, and teaspoons and tablespoons instead of the weight measurements. In most of the rest of the world, if you find a recipe from, let's say, the United Kingdom or anywhere else in Europe, most often you're going to find the ingredients listed as um, weights, like a, a, a measurement of weight. So ounces or grams, um, liters, milliliters, that sort of thing. Uh, so I do sometimes use uh, recipes from other parts of the country or other parts of the parts of the world I'm sorry um, so I do have a scale and I will measure my ingredients out if that is how they have the quantities so just a little information for you so I've, I've mixed together you don't have to mix these together you can do them separately if you'd like but I find it's easy or just to mix the sugar and the cinnamon together and what I'm gonna do is just evenly sprinkle this over the entire rectangle of dough, all over my butter. So yum. So these are cinnamon rolls. There are other types of rolls that you can make, sweet rolls. You can make orange rolls, which are very good. I, I really thought about making orange rolls, but changed my mind and decided on cinnamon rolls. Um, you wanna try and get it as close to the edges as you can. 
You can make all kinds of different fruit rolls, blueberry, raspberry, pretty much anything you want. Um, so this is a good cinnamon roll recipe. It's great for breakfast, especially on the weekend. Um, I do have a recipe that I sometimes use called overnight cinnamon rolls. And basically what you do is you make the dough up to this point, um, you cut it, roll it and cut them, and then you put them in the, in the pan and put them in the refrigerator. And when they're in the refrigerator, they'll rise a little bit, but they're not gonna rise a whole lot more um, just because the, the refrigerator will slow the growth of the yeast. So it'll still rise a little. When you take it out in the morning, you let it come to room temperature, it'll rise the rest of the way that it needs to. Put them in the oven, and it's really nice because you have really nice warm cinnamon rolls. Mm. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the long way, we're gonna roll it up from the long way, kind of get it started with your fingers, roll it a little bit, and you wanna roll it as tightly as you can. All the way to the end. Roll that as tight as possible. The tighter you get it, the more swirl you'll get in your bread. Oh, I'm losing some on the edge here. That's all right. All right, so we're, we've got our dough rolled out. I'm just going to move my rolling pin there a little bit. If you don't have a rolling pin, that's okay. You can, um, you guys roll, kind of roll it out with your hands. That's fine too. Press it out with your hands. Okay, here is my, my little trick. So in the recipe, it says to cut the rolls, um, with a serrated knife, which is great, but it kind of mushes the rolls together. So what I like to do, take my handy dandy dental floss and I'll cut off a pretty good size of dental floss. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just kind of wiggle my dental floss beneath my roll and we're gonna put it one over top of the other and just pull all the way through and it makes a nice cut. So what we're gonna do with these, I've got a pan, just a regular sheet pan that I've got lined with um, parchment paper. And we're just going to set our rolls. We're gonna do about two inches. Our rolls in about two inch wide. Just like that. Set them on our baking pan. The parchment paper is instead of greasing my pan. Um, if you don't have parchment paper, that's fine. I don't always have it. I happen to have some. So I'm using parchment paper instead of greasing my pan. I just think it, it's just a faster way for me to do it. So that's really all. Um, Parchment paper will not let it stick to it, so here we are. And you see we've got some nice, um, oh, we're going to want to pinch that together just a little bit here so it doesn't fall apart. All right, we've got some nice swirls of cinnamon and sugar and butter. We're just going to keep doing this until we have finished all of it and we'll put these on the pan. What we'll do then is we're going to cover it either with plastic wrap or as I like to cover it with just a, um, a clean dish towel. Uh, I don't really have plastic wrap in my house, so that's what I use. We're going to cover it and we're going to let this rise at room temperature for about 30 minutes before we bake it. Our rolls have been raising again for about 30 minutes. And they're about twice as big as they were when I cut them. So those are ready to go into the oven. Um, I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And I am going to put these into the oven. 
They will cook for between 20 and 22 minutes. Uh, once they're lightly golden brown, um, they will be done and I will take them out. So let's get them in the oven. Our cinnamon rolls have been baking for about 21 minutes and they look done to me. So we are going to take those out of our oven very carefully. Look at those slightly browned and gooey and delicious looking. So what we're going to do now is we are going to leave these cool for about five, five to 10 minutes. Just let them cool off a little bit. Um, then we will make our icing, cream cheese icing, and we will we'll ice them and then eat them. Two, one, and action. Now for the last part of our cinnamon rolls, the cream cheese icing. So in my bowl, I've got three cups of powdered sugar. I'm going to add to that two tablespoons of milk that I've mixed with two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And I've got three tablespoons of softened butter and four ounces of softened cream cheese. We're just gonna put all of that into our bowl. And I'm going to use my hand mixer to mix this all together. So I need to move over here where I have my electricity. And we are just going to, woo, woo. <laughs> gets out of control pretty fast. All right, we're going to mix this up quickly, as quickly as I can. You can use, just use a spoon if you would like to do that as well. You wanna make sure that your uh, butter and your cream cheese is really nice and soft, especially if you're going to use a spoon to mix it. Um, I like to make mine really, really smooth, so I decided to use my hand mixer today for that. I have to turn it up now a little bit, now that most of the sugar is incorporated there. There we are. Just a few seconds. Just like so. Nice and creamy. And ready to go. Alright, so turn that off. And we're going to spoon this. Probably need a spoon here. We're going to spoon this over our still warm but not super hot uh, cinnamon rolls. So we're just going to dollop that on. Since they're still warm, that will help soften our icing. And you don't need to put icing on. If you if you would rather um, leave them plain, you can also do that. There's lots of good flavor in there with the cinnamon and the sugar and the butter. Um, I really do like a, a good cinnamon roll with some cream cheese frosting. Uh, that's my favorite way to eat them, and I figure if you're going to eat them, might as well go all the way, right? So, we are going to finish frosting these. Basically, we are finished with our cinnamon rolls. Uh, we are going to enjoy these um, as an afternoon snack. You can enjoy them for breakfast uh, with a nice big glass of milk or something. Um, so, uh, enjoy your cinnamon rolls. And uh, I hope you have fun making them.